Hello Isopod fans, this is Wally Kern and welcome to another episode of the Isopod Vlog. For this video and probably several in the future, I'm going to be doing some comparisons of different foods that the Isopods eat. But for right now we have some breaking news. I have an authority on Isopod food, somebody that really knows the inside scoop. So let's go to that person right now. Hi, can you tell us your name? We have some insights that say that you're an expert on isopod food. Can you tell us what they prefer? Can you give us any comments on what isopods really want? The isopod vlog. Just a couple of really quick notes before we get into this video. This is going to be a series. It's not going to be one video comparing which foods are the best and coming to a, de a determination. I wanted to point out that isopods will really eat anything at all. But the main focus of their diets really should be leaves and decaying wood. Some isopods require more proteins and some isopods require more vegetable matter in their food. And just because they eat one food over the other doesn't mean that that one food is the most nutritional food that you can feed them. If it were up to me, I would eat chocolate chip cookies all day. We have to find the right balance between what they're going to eat and what's the most nutritional food for these isopods. But again, the emphasis should be on leaves and decaying wood. And don't forget, we have a giveaway going on right now where we're giving away some really cool isopods. So I'll go ahead and put the link to last week's video that includes all the giveaway rules at the end of this video. Make sure you go to that video at the end of this one, watch the video, and go ahead and enter and be eligible for some really, really cool isopods. Let's get on to this week's video. We're gonna go through five different isopods here, and I'll put up their names as we go through each bin. This first group of isopods is Porcelio Levis Orange. This is one of my favorites. The orange on this isopod is just spectacular, as you can see in some of these videos. This is a good colony. Uh, I started about six to eight months ago with this. I'm seeing a lot of babies. I'm really happy with this uh, colony of isopods. This is a 15 quart enclosure. I have plenty of uh, ventilation. I have the sphagnum moss on the right here, as you can see. A lot of dead leaves on the left hand side and a couple of places for them to hide under. I'm going to go ahead and maintain this bin just like, like I normally do. I've added some eggshells here for calcium. I'm going to go ahead and add in a uh, special blend of foods that I've uh, come up with in the last couple of months. Next, we'll be adding some flake food. And this is going to be the comparison between this special food that I've come up with and flake food. And today, we'll come back to these five bins and we'll take a look at which foods they like the best. By comparing today's video with tomorrow's video, we should get an idea of which foods they're eating and which ones they like the best. For my normal maintenance here, I'm going to go ahead and mist out the sphagnum moss. It looks a little bit dry, and I like to give these uh, Levis orange a little bit of moisture. You can see I'm spraying down the right-hand side of the uh, enclosure. So let's go ahead and flip over that wood and let's take a look at some of these uh, Porcelio Levis orange again. Here you can see just their brilliant, brilliant orange coloration. It's a larger uh, isopod, and that orange really shows through with this uh, animal. You can see they have this black stripe down the middle. That's not a, gener a genetic thing. That's actually showing their digestive system and showing what they've eaten in the last uh, few hours. I'll go ahead and flip over the wood, and let's go on to the next isopod. Isopod number two is Atlantosia floridana and is better known as the Florida Fast. You can certainly see why these get the name. This is one of the most difficult isopods I've ever seen to try to photograph. But my photography skills aside, this is one of the most fun isopods because they're just so quick. Just very, very different from most other isopods. Let's go ahead and add this special food. I'll go ahead and throw in some eggshells. 
and we'll be throwing in the flake food as well. With the number of isopods in this culture, I make sure that there's enough food for, uh, for all of them. I'm going to go ahead and try to get a close-up of these isopods and see if I can catch them before they run out of the picture. It's nearly impossible unless I put on some kind of a slow motion mode on this camera. So we'll move on to the next uh, isopod. This next enclosure contains some of the hobby's favorite isopods, and this is Porcelio Hoffman Segai, also known as the Titans. And as you may know, they're called Titans for a good reason, because they become one of the largest isopods available. Picking up this decaying wood, I see that they haven't finished their mushrooms that I put in their enclosure about three days ago. That's kind of surprising. I'll probably pull off and not give them uh, mushrooms the next time I feed. This is actually my second container of uh, Porcelio Hoffman Segai. The first container holds the adults. These are the babies that I received earlier this year. I'm zooming in here to get a better view of these titans, and you can see they're just magnificent animals. Not only are they large, they really have a personality about them. If you look closely, you can see the one on the upper left-hand corner is actually going through a molt. When I started keeping isopods again in the summer of uh, 2018, I obtained probably four or five cultures of isopods before I realized that the Porcelio Hoffman Segai was the one isopod that I really, really wanted. I was very fortunate to get a group of these wonderful animals from a Madison Herpetological Society benefit auction last year. And I was even more fortunate to be able to get a bunch of babies in the spring of this year. So let's go ahead and flip over that wood and we're going to go ahead and add that special concoction. And I'll talk more about this food that I've come up with in later videos as we get closer and closer to getting some kind of a feel for which foods these isopods are really enjoying. You can see immediately that these isopods are going for that food. Let's go ahead and throw in some flake food and see a couple of the, the isopods going for the flake food, but uh, they're really digging into this special food. The fourth isopod that we'll be feeding today is Armadillidium maculatum zebra. You can see how I have the, the enclosure set up here. It's very dry. There's a moist area on the right, uh, the sphagnum moss area. Just like the Hoffman Segai, this is my second culture of these uh, zebra isopods. My first culture is going really, really strong. The second culture is starting to kick off as well. You can see some of the adults and you can see the babies are, are just now starting to show up in the last probably two or three weeks. Let's go ahead and get a close-up of these babies. They're certainly so cute. From my experience, you'll always see zebras on the cork bark or on the uh, substrate, but most of the time you'll find, especially the babies, in the dried leaves. Let's go ahead and flip back over that cork bark and begin feeding. Go ahead and add the uh, special food, some flake food, and we'll throw in some eggshells for the calcium. One thing that I don't do with the Armadillidium maculatum zebras is miss the whole enclosure. I like to just miss that sphagnum moss. Let's go ahead and move on to the next enclosure. This container has Armadillidium klugai Montenegro, or better known as the clown isopod. You'll see this container has a ton of springtails. From my experience, for me personally, keeping these springtails really increases the odds of keeping these clown isopods healthy right from the very beginning. To be honest, I've really struggled trying to keep these clown isopods alive and eventually trying to get some babies from them. It's only been within the last month or so that I've gotten some manky from these isopods. You can really see why they're called clown isopods here in this picture. Let's go ahead and feed, and again, we're adding the special diet. We'll go ahead and throw in some eggshells. And finally, we'll add some flake food. We'll go ahead and finish up with these clown isopods and come back tomorrow and see the results. One day later. So let's go ahead and go through these enclosures and see how they did. This first one, as you remember, is Porcelio Levis Orange. I'll go ahead and turn over the cork bark here and pull back the leaves. And from what I see, 
They've eaten both the flake food and the special food. I don't see any of either one still sitting there. Perhaps the conclusion is that I need to feed more of both foods next time. Let's move on to enclosure number two. This is the Florida Fast Isopods. We have three different cork barks here. I'm going to go ahead and turn over a couple of them so that we can expose the substrate. And this is kind of surprising. We do have some of the special food still sitting there. All of the flake food is gone. I guess I'm very, very surprised at this, considering the number of Florida Fast Isopods we have in this enclosure. I think we can conclude that they like the fish food more than the special food. Isopod number three is the Porcelio Hoffman Segei. Let's go ahead and lift up the, the cork bark here, and we can see both the fish flake and the special food is all gone. This is a really good sign. Again, maybe we come to the conclusion that I need to feed more of the foods in the future. Let's check out isopod number four. That's Armadolidium maculatum zebra. Let's go ahead and lift up the cork bark. Here again, we see both of the foods are all gone, both the fish flake and the special food. Conclusion, and say it with me, I need to feed more of these foods. And isopod number five is, again, Armadolidium klugai montenegro, the clown isopod. Go ahead and lift up the cork bark, and again, all of the foods are gone. For our next video, I think what I'll do is I'll feed more foods, we'll recheck, and hopefully get a better feel for which foods these isopods prefer. We certainly know they love the flake food, and they certainly ate up this special blend. We'll put these isopods away, but before we end this video, let me remind you that we have a giveaway going right now for three free isopods to be shipped to you. I'll put the link to the video from last week here. You can go check that video out, take a look at the rules, and go ahead and enter. For this video, thank you, Isopod fans, for watching again, and we'll see you next week.